So, um, thank you guys all for coming. Um, so, what we'll be talking about tonight is VAR. Um, so, can, a beautiful, can VAR make a beautiful game and equitable? Oh, uh, before I get into this, if you have clarifying questions, please feel free to ask me. Stop me at any point. Same as soul searching ones for towards the end. Not for this <laughs> all right. So in the Stone Age, a couple of years ago, before um, VAR got put into soccer or football, football, soccer, there was no video. Uh, basically, you know, the refs were trying to monitor everything and. If they miss a call, no one's going to actually go back and check. This led to a couple of kind of weird instances for those of you that are big soccer fans like Maradona, Stand of God, and some other weird things where you know, Henri taps the ball with his hand and then ends up scoring, and Ireland gets popped out of the World Cup. Um, all the time. And so opponents of actually putting VAR into soccer basically said it would slow the game down. Uh, the they were going to have this really well and slip ball style and then take a commercial break and then we come back and the refs have some sort of decision. And so prior to this, there's no review of fouls, referee decisions, cards, or whatever. Um, there may be an after the fact review where it might lead to the rest of the sanction, but like at the moment, in the, as the game's going, they're not going to really have any like, overturning of calls. So, what is VAR? It's basically this video assisted referee. Um, think of similar to the instant replay that you see a lot of those things. Um, and so, this allows you to look back and see if the, you know, the officials monitoring the match are actually got the call right. Um, and it's really supposed to only be used in cases of clear and obvious errors. Um, or they've now morphed it so you can use it in goal scoring opportunities as well. So, like, if someone scores a goal, they're not going to be. Sides, or foul, or hand or whatever. Um, but it's really supposed to be used decently and frequently. So, this is implemented in the EPL um, first in um, the 2019, sorry, I should say 2019, 2020 season. Um, and the introduction leads to an increase in correct decisions um, and of about, you know, the 240,000 incidents, sorry, 2,400 incidents that get looked at through VAR, um, about 109 of them got overturned. Um, so it's about you know, three and a half decisions uh, each match. Um, so, quick side note, we're just going to be looking at the EPL today. Um, people have looked at other leagues. Um, the data we have just for the last few hours. And so, why would an economist care about VAR? Um, basically, I'm a public economist that studies crime, racial disparities, and policing. I also do a little bit of work that looks at monitoring of illicit behavior. And so, it's sort of a nice context for, in addition to me just like being a soccer fan and having fun, it kind of fits with me, you know, looking at monitoring illicit behavior. I'm particularly interested in that point and sort of does this monitoring have any effects on sort of the racial disparities that we see in this? And so, VAR is not explicitly going to look at every single foul, as we sort of talked about before. But the question is, does having a sort of camera on the make players actually think, okay, now I'm going to change my behavior, or referees to make them think, okay, now I'm going to also change my behavior. And so, you know, we're wondering now, like, the big question is here, even though VAR can't directly overrule these, like, an on-the-pitch referee, a referee can go to VAR and Decide, hey, I don't like what told me. Like, do they actually sort of change their behavior? And like, this is sort of a check on me to sort of either bad or sort of on the margin gray area of behavior that they might have. So, additional antidotes, I don't think they labor this too much, but there's a fair amount of evidence for um, just racism. Which is particularly why I'm looking at the two of the racial dimension to try to see, hey, this is sort of top down monitoring and watching where all the matches actually lead to any of this increase. Um, so, this is a sort of famous incident from last year. Um, there was a racist outburst after um, Twitter Tony actually got a kind of racist streets after showing a goal. Um, there's some of 
this is one of the incidents that occurred um, after um, England got famously knocked out of the uh, Euros. There was a fair amount of racist um, chatter on social media against the black folks, actually, against some of their penalty kicks. And then this isn't just relegated to the particular uh, England. Um, there's a fair amount that's going on with um, Spain as well. Uh, I grew up sort of watching the Spanish League. There were times when matches would either be halted or stopped for people throwing bananas on the field and like black players. And so it's just like a, a non trivial thing in one place that you might actually see it. So. So, you know, in addition to sort of this anecdotal evidence, there's also some experiment. People have also done um, experiments where they've looked at fouls in particular, and people seem to show that challenges by black players are seen as more severe and more harsh. People sort of in the back of your mind, you think about, like, hey, what does actually this VAR sort of affect during this version of the team? And so, um, VAR. The absence of crowds also seems to sort of marginally influence productivity of um, non black, I mean, non white players. And so basically, this second this study that they did was during COVID. So during COVID, there were no fans in the stands. They actually were able to show that um, non white players actually seem to play better in the absence of these fans. Um, yeah, this final point is just a uh, quote, which I won't read in its entirety from. Uh, one of uh, some studies of racism in the field. And basically, they're arguing that none of the major stakeholders in the legal stream are going to be free from these sort of rights. Right. So, a study in also, VAR, so a study in Germany actually looked at, and Italy, so the VAR is actually slightly decreases um, referees' home bias. So you can imagine a ref might see the home fans cheering and yelling, and they're even commentators to some extent will say that the refs sort of yell that, like the fans would yell down the ref to actually get them to make this call. Um, that sort of seems to decrease when you get um, at VAR. Um, Another study also shows that VAR slightly decreases offsides, uh, fouls, and no cards. Um, this is something sort of similar to that when we start looking at the data from the EPL. So, famously, these are for the two other like, top five leagues, uh, but this is not in them itself. Um, and, you know, even though there were initially skeptics, it seems like most people now, after this sort of survey, are actually on board with these ideas. That sort of, we don't want these like, long, drawn out matches, uh, a sort of decrease after people sort of see that VR doesn't really see the external matches that much. The average sort of delay is about 50 seconds, it's not really that much. Um, and now we stop this time, there's an static attack of like 10 minutes to put out there, not just think So it doesn't seem to have that much confidence. So, basically, these are questions. Does VAR actually affect fouls, sort of infractions of any sort, or the fouls and red cards? Um, and does this monitoring effect actually change any of the racial distributions we see with fouls? I'm not putting all the students. Any questions thus far? Yeah. <clears throat> right. So, this is the part of my question. So, the brief statistical aside. <laughs> VAR being introduced abruptly gives us a really nice natural experiment. So what we're going to do is this kind of thing that we call a difference in a difference. So we're going to look at before and after VAR for two different groups. Or it won't look like two different groups. We'll look at before and after VAR by race. So we'll compare um, black players, Hispanic players, Asian players to sort of the rest of the group of players before and after VAR. And that will sort of be our difference in a difference. We're structuring in this way so we sort of throw it in and put some of our statistical biases and biases. Basically, if we don't do this, we're sort of running a clear phase dialogue. And I'm just going to put it not necessarily. So, brief description of the data. 
Um, we're using English preliminary data from 2012 to about uh, 2022. Um, we got data on players' race um, from the machine learning engine that actually like looks at pictures of players and sort of shows their race. Um, we also, before we make this sort of more public and available, we're going to go back and make do sort of a manual check to make sure it's actually picking up and we think it's picking up, but um, it's still doing so far. We have um, data on whether or not players get cards in matches, um, the fouls that get committed against them, and the fouls that commit themselves. How many minutes they play in what position? Um, so some of the stuff we won't use, but we have all this stuff. All right. So the more friendly pictures we have to This is basically just looking at um, fouls here and years. This is the average amount of fouls committed by a player in a given match. So you know, it's right around like half a foul a match or more than that. So unfortunately, you can see there's a slight dip after this dotted line here, which is where the other is. So for the, all the graphs, we want to look at this dotted line so we can see where the VAR is. So the same thing for yellow cards. You notice this is bouncing around a lot more than the last one. Yellow cards are um, a little bit more of a, if you're familiar with soccer, you know that yellow cards are a little bit more of a rare event, and so you're going to get a little bit more of It still looks like you're seeing a dip in the yellow cards after um, this VAR play. And then red cards are even more of a rare event. There's a lot of bouncing around here, but they still seem to sort of fall off a cliff around about here, and that doesn't really seem to change all that much with here. All right, so now if we look at by race, you'll see here's the sort of trend line, and black players are getting more fouls called on them per match, but after the AR for both black players and general players, it seems to like fall. This is really noisy and it's not clear immediately what's going on here without some deeper sort of analysis. But this is the VAR yellow cards of black players. So it's pretty noisy without any deeper analysis. The same thing for red cards is sort of, you know, whether black players get more fouls, more red cards, or less relative to the rest of um, the population of players. It doesn't really seem to change all the um, sort of bounces around. Um, So we do a similar thing for Hispanic players um, here, and you see they're actually getting less fouls called on them um, than sort of the, the rest of the field here. And they're also getting less yellow cards in the rest of the field. And then the red cards are not really similar. Asian players, you're seeing, again, this is just bouncing around. It's not, I don't see a ton of an effect here. Um, it's also a little bit of a bouncing around going on here with um, the yellow cards as well. And then the red cards are something odd. There's a big spike. Again, this is not that big in terms of magnitude if you're looking at the size here. Most players are not getting a red card in a very rare event, but it looks like. Relative to the average per year, this sort of jumps up. So that difference in difference I told you about is now I'm going to show you the sort of results here. This is just some pictures and look at sort of where the trend line's going. And basically, the statistical uh, sort of where we follow over here, <laughs> this is the equation of the estimate. So this is VAR, this is race. We're not going to do this as a vector. We're going to slide in um, the race of uh, the, the race group that we're particularly interested in. So we'll do this separately for black, Hispanic, and Asian players. And then we're going to interact this with VAR. Um, I sort of skipped the controls here, but we're also going to control for the year of the match. So we're sort of controlling for season. And we're also controlling for the number of minutes of player plays because you know, if you're playing a ton of minutes, you're probably going to foul home and just not higher. So, stay with me a second. 
So fouls, it looks like this is just the VAR dumps. This is what VAR does by itself. So it looks like fouls in the EPL are actually rising after VAR. So it looks like this monitoring effect is sort of seeming to catch some sort of infractions with that way. Um, this, we're going to see this pretty much stays constant and about that size throughout all of the tables I'm sure. Now, red cards don't really change. Yellow cards go down very slightly. This is, this statistic is a bit of a very slight fall. Um, so, um, this fouls against is basically, it should be mechanical because if someone gets fouled, they're going against someone else, right? But what's going on here is we're looking at trying to see, hey, by race, are there, are there new fouls that are being called who will be more to a particular race than that? Um, and so what actually looks like is happening for that column is that you're seeing that the new fouls are getting called are somewhat accruing to black players. It's like somehow maybe it's possible that through VAR, black players are fouled more often, possibly, and then now they're getting more fouls called for. So if we look at the dummy, which is for, you know, hey, we're a post VAR world for a black player, what's going on? Um, it looks like fouls call on them slightly increases, red card slightly decreases. This is a really tiny number. That's why you're seeing that zero here, but it's statistically significant. Um, and then yellow cards don't really seem to be changing. What you're seeing here on the bottom of this average is just the average amount of fouls, red cards, yellow cards, and fouls against that an average player has. Um, oh, okay. I was going to say, I don't think I can talk about that. So. <laughs> This is slightly cut off here, but now we're looking at the same thing for Hispanic players. Again, like I told you, we this VAR uh, number here, the number of fouls called in a post like VAR world. It's basically staying about the same. And these stars are the most statistical significance. So in a post VAR world for Hispanic players, we have no statistically significant effects on fouls, red cards, yellow cards goes down slightly again, and fouls against actually goes down slightly again as well. Um, I won't speculate as to why this is. We're going to have to do a little bit more digging to figure out exactly what's going on. So, for Asian players in the post VAR, um, again, we're seeing this like for VAR itself, there's an increase in fouls. Um, and there's really nothing statistically significant going on up until we get fouls against, and that's falling somewhat, but it's also like sort of right on the edge of significance. Um, for those of you that are really statistically inclined, this is statistically significant at 90% level, so you may or may not really buy the person that's here. All right. So, what are all these pictures and tables I just showed you? Basically, at, at baseline, it looks like fouls actually increase on the VAR. And relative to the average fouls per player per match, it seems like a pretty big actual increase. Um, the foul counts called on black players also increase. This is about 40% by player by match, which is pretty, it's a pretty good deal. Um, the foul counts don't increase after the AR, but it's really in the beginning of the race. And most of the new fouls being called now are also in favor of black players. So the, Fouls is cool, but now we're to black players and we have this new increase in fouls. Um, the opposite sense of the for Hispanic players. So red cards aren't really changing after the AR. Um, red cards issued to black players are a small statistical significant decrease. Uh, again, red card data is we included, it's pretty noisy, so I think there might be something going on here, but Sure. Yellow cards actually seem to decrease across the board after VAR. Maybe unsurprisingly, that this is one of the things that VAR is actually targeted to look at. So maybe if you know you're going to be monitored for possible yellow card level infractions, you'll maybe decrease that behavior. Um, the decrease is only significant though for Hispanic players. It doesn't look like there's really a pretty short difference to this, except for Hispanic players. And again, it's also pretty big, but this is nearly 50% relative to the average per page. So, 
those have a degree of our does lead to a significant change in foul zone habits and red cars of color. We're not sure about the mechanism at present. What I was working on in my office before I walked over here was trying to figure out if there's any change in behaviors of us. So, so that if we look at the foul counts by race, by ref, does that seem to change before or after VAR? Um, that's sort of the next stage of this, and we'll see what happens there. Um, to the extent, though, that we thought the existing fouls, yellow cards and red cards, are inequitable from colors, it actually does seem like it could actually lead to some possibly, you know, what's up this heading in the right direction? It's trying to not be All right, so what are we talking about doing next? One of the big things I think is going to check on referee behavior. This is pretty much the mechanism that we think is um, driving the results that we're we'll finding. Um, it's possible the players themselves are sort of changing their behavior enough that they are doing everything, but I would guess that it's more referee behavior. Um, possibly we're looking at more leagues. When we initially started this, we thought we were going to be able to spread for more leagues, and then some weird things happened. So the guy who's on the paper was going out and spreading them. So now we're, we're trying to see, hey, so we have some results here, maybe we should add some more things and see what happens. Um, and then additionally, sort of more control is possible. Um, we're controlling for minutes at present, but if you play soccer, you sort of know that like, a central back is much more likely to get fouls called on than a striker, so because we're playing defense the entire match, so we love to be able to control for position to some extent. Um, the current data we have, Kind of gives us that, but we haven't really found a good way to actually implement the position control. So it's like washing everything away. Yeah. Any questions? Right, we're going to get back just a short break and then you can pepper it with all the questions that you've prepared. So we're going to give you a surprise and then you can take a short break. Did everybody get a ticket? I was going to throw it on the floor, but that didn't seem like a good idea. All right, we have two hats to give away today. We have to wear it proudly and tell everybody about the Grid City Bacon Ring.
The old guy has to get his on. All right. I will just give you, I think it's like the last three numbers probably will suffice. We'll see. Uh, last three numbers, zero, four, five. Excellent. Back in the back. Here you go. Uh, he's here on a regular basis, so you too can win with repetition. So we'll hopefully get you back. That was a shameless plug. Shameless plug. All right. Uh, last four digits, zero, four, seven. Zero four seven zero four seven. Is it zero five? No, that is not what it says. There is. I just gave these out. <laughs> Nobody left the room. Zero four seven. Anybody? Last four digits. No, it's got to be somewhere very close to you. No. Okay. I'm not sure how that happened. All right. Try another one. Zero six eight. Zero six eight. Excellent. All right. Um, so just a quick plug again, uh, January 9th is our next talk. Come here, Ellen Bear, give her a talk. Uh, and uh, let's see, anything else I was to say? Oh, I should actually thank a few people, which I always forget. Uh, one, Seven Seas, who gives us this venue for free. Um, and that's because we give them business. So yay, drink up and have some food. Um, definitely. Um, if you have ideas for speakers, please send me an email. My email's up on the, I'll put the thing back up. Um, but I'm always looking for ideas for 2024. We have a few people on uh, on the books, but uh, if uh, you want to give a talk, uh, or if uh, you have any ideas for even even a type of uh, speaking you'd like to see, just let me know, and I'm definitely happy to look around. Uh, and other than that, we'll bring Matt back up for the Q and A. All right, come on up, Matt. You have to speak up. He's got a lot of social questions. That's right. So, what the fact that you're talking about here, like you're asking me? Yeah, so basically, she's asking because there are better actions between race and the moisture. Um, Consider that, but I think we have the data to be able to do it. I have to check and make sure that that's a, as interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it's generally not any fouls, yellow cards, um, goal scoring. Um, and then, uh, and so, uh, basically, the ref, the coach can't actually initiate. The ref has to do it himself. So, if you're watching a soccer match, you see them get the uh, next sort of referee actually asking for who they are. Like, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, so she was wondering if the referees actually have any um, equity training. Um, and so I don't actually know that, um, but we could actually. I need to I look back. The EPL actually lost a, a, a no win for racism campaign, and we would sort of interact our results with like the training on that. I'm sure that Uh, we could observe 
what the referees and referee matches between certain the actual people professionally or like Jim or Ref that be England or Spain or be England or Ireland. I can't say that. Yeah, but I mean if we get that influence of other shows, you can easily answer that on so it's just types of pressure for that. Yeah, um, people say about, so the referees are about 3,000, is the number of observations. I want to say the rest of the data is around about 100,000 observations. It's, it's all per player, per match. Um, so there's a fair amount of them. Yeah, I'm hoping I can get my uh, colleague at Webster to ask the questions. I'm particularly interested in what happens from outside of the world. There are, I won't throw them under the bus, but there are leagues that have very bad reputations. Um, England is not nearly as bad a reputation as some of the other leagues. Just a fever. Yeah. After a game, I got fired by the people. Yeah, they'll review it, but. You know, unless it's like really egregious, they're not taking any action. It's also not going to affect the match as it's been played. So, you know, if a referee misses too many calls, it's possible to throw out. I think this happened to in the South Africa World Cup in 2010. I think a couple of something like this missed for the four calls. But it's not generally, it doesn't happen often. And also, it's not going to actually affect the match as it's been played. In fact, after the game, Yeah, I mean, they, they do review the calls to make sure that they're fine with them. They're not really taking action against referees in the match. And possibly, you know, depending on how many calls you miss, um, they're probably not taking action against referees. Yeah. Um, that's another thing you would probably want to control for, just like match tensions. Um, because we haven't really had a chance to control for that. Yeah, so he's asking if there was a big spike in fouls, red cards, yellow cards, we would have a black Um, which would make sense, you know. If Manchester United's playing Liverpool, there's probably not a big chance to not that. Amount of fouls. So, um, yeah, we're we're trying to think about ways to possibly control for this. We can't observe what team players are from, um, who they're playing against. So, we can observe that. We can sort of try to control our program spaces. As we've Yeah. yeah, we don't observe where the files we observe where the files actually occur on the pitch. To some extent, we're trying to toe the line here because if we throw in too many controls, we're going to watch everything out. So um, I think we want to. We probably need some sort of match, like match controls. Um, I think that's part of it. Like, I don't know that it'll be like sort of where the foul actually occurs. Um, 
Yeah, so I guess, but there's also the nice sort of thing in the EPL where basically there are no playoffs for the So basically every every game that we're observing is a regular season game. Now, to your point about stakes, though, that doesn't necessarily mean that the stakes are the same for every regular season game. If you're facing relegation, that's a big game where or if you're facing like winning the title, that's another big game too. Um, so we, I guess we could maybe try and we have to look back at like sort of the history of the, each of the seasons that we have data for and figure out like which games are the good games, but um, we could control for that. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, what's this? Um, so I'm going to really answer the question. I'm also going to tell the truth. Um, what the joke is, ask the, um, ask the AI to <laughs> No, the real question, though, is basically this. Um, this is one of the things we're going to manage with the back and check. I think it's basically just like for any Spanish speaking country, it's what they would consider something like Spanish being. Yeah, this could sort of skew the results because basically that would mean that like players from Spain are being counted as Hispanic. So, um, I mean, this is what we're going to go back and manually check before we piece this to the broader. You guys all swore to secrecy now this <laughs> Yeah, um, on that, I'm actually not really sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there, I know it got implemented in non English leagues um, before this, and so it had been used for a while before this. And I think it actually made a in the MLS, even before it made a appearance in England, and then sort of migrated. So it, it's sort of a natural, it felt like a kind of trend that was being taken up across soccer more broadly. And England is a little bit late to the punch. I will get to some of the other Yeah, I'm not sure if we have data on the actual being overturned, but that instance you talked like the, the situation you're talking about is actually what led me to think about this. I was watching a match one day and a black player got a red card called and I was just like, I have made that exact same tackle in the games before. And I mean, it's a foul, yes, but it's not, it's clearly not a red card. So, um, yeah, that's actually the point I'm trying to You had, um, when you were showing data for like over time, it looked like every statistic, every one you were looking at for different groups of uh, players of color, that it was really spiky compared to the norm. Is that just because of the number of players that you're comparing to, or what, what's the, why is that? Yeah, it's the number of players. So about 33% of the data we had is for black players. About six is for Hispanic players, and then around about two is for Asian players. So, have you factored in how the numbers have changed over time in the way you did the analysis? So the, the, amount, the number of black players and Hispanic players that changed in each year? Yeah, the, the year doubles actually should pick up for that. So we should have two different for like random trends that go on in the year, but I mean, we have it beyond that. Number, beyond that number. Other questions? So you said fouls against, right? So that was who the foul was, but who they fouled. 
So fouls against is if a foul gets called on you. And so say, you know, I'm a brilliant dribbler, and people are getting tired of me, and just knock me over and get five times, I got five fouls against I'm just wondering if the, the fouls are, when you look at, are five players of color on players of color or on So I'm wondering if that, who you're fouling actually, like, what the racial difference is in that. That is a really good question. I'm not sure if our data is a good answer. I would love to know that the answer to that question. So I'd have to look at really in depth and see about that because I don't know we can count for fouls against, but I don't know if we can get a This particular player can be a foul. Um, really, um, one, I'm on a research corner, and two, this is not, it doesn't quite fit in the classes that I teach, but, um, I mean, if you know some students that are interested in soccer sorts of things, I can always do this. You can ask students to watch replays of soccer matches. Any other questions? All right, it's time to speak one more time. Thank you all. See you in January and happy holidays.